<sighs> Thank you, Emily. Um, it was so amazing when I first heard that song. I was like, did they just say remember who you are? Did they just say the bless the ocean in me? I'm like, did she just quote Rumi? Um, so it was very exciting to um, hear that song on stage. Um, <sighs> so a couple weeks ago, I had a, um, I was working on a work project. More accurately, I was procrastinating on a work project. And um, I was at the, I, I work from home. And so I was really straight, you know, I'd be like working on the project and I'd like, ooh, email. Let's go check email. And then I'd be, and I'd, oh no, I really need to focus. So I decided to go to Starbucks, packed up my laptop, decided to go to Starbucks so that I could procrastinate in public. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I walked into the Starbucks and I sat down and set, set up in my little corner and I went and ordered my coffee and this barista was, I can, she can, I can only describe her as pure love. She had such a light and such an amazing energy and I felt like and the, engaged in conversation that was like just the right amount. You know, sometimes like they're they're really friendly, but I'm like, do you really care what I'm doing this weekend? Can you just make my coffee? Like, you know, and, and but it was like the right amount. It was like she was looking at my soul when she talked to me and, and engaged and cared. And I couldn't help but feel like there was love in my coffee when I went to go drink my coffee, much like Anne's cookies. Um, and then I watched as, because I was procrastinating and working, I watched as each person came up and got their coffee. And it was the same experience. It was like they walked away and their souls were lighter and they were, um, there was a smile on their face. And then I watched how the patrons were interacting with each other. And it was like, after you, you get the Splenda. No, after you, you get the Splenda. Like everybody, this Starbucks was like buzzing and alive. I mean, who can get work done when Starbucks is buzzing and alive with love, right? And every and I, I must have been there for at least 45 minutes watching as each person came in. And then I started to imagine... Each of those people that had come in, gotten this cup of coffee, had this exchange, left that Starbucks with the love in their cup, and what ripples they must have sent out into their day. I imagined people stopping at stop signs and graciously letting other people go. And I imagined you know, people noticing this morning there were baby ducks outside. I imagined that people took the time to notice baby ducks or how beautiful the sun was. And that when they got to their destination, that they were kinder, that they were, that their souls were uplifted and they were spreading those ripples out into the world. And I thought, gosh, like how many people were impacted and got the gift of this Starbucks barista's love and brought that out into the world? And as I was just really swirling in not working on my project, this gentleman, um, a car came pulling up, hit the curb because he was pulling into his parking spot so quick, got out, breezed in the door, clearly late, very nice business suit, and his energy walked into the Starbucks before he did. You ever had those people where it's like you can just feel it? And he was in line, and you could tell he was late, and he was really tainting my Starbucks energy because he was, you know, he was just so frenetic and it wasn't moving fast enough and he was annoyed at the barista who was spreading love to each person um, and because he had places to be and he was busy um, and then when he got his coffee he berated this barista because she had accidentally put whipped cream on his caramel macchiato I know egregious um, and he he laid into her and I watched, God, I get emotional just talking about it. I watched her light dim. I actually watched her sink within herself. And then I watched everybody else in Starbucks who had just had this cup of love infused proceed to berate that man. They were like a mob and they were attacking that man. How dare you 
right? And I'm watching all of this, and I'm like, and I watched the entire energy of that Starbucks shift. And the man left, and people were still talking about, can you believe that man? Can you believe? And I, for a split second, I started to, um, I started to kind of be on the side of like, yeah, forget that guy, he's the worst, and you know. Um, but I watched this energy shift, and suddenly all of that love and all of the joy and all of that, the blessings. Now people were all talking about how awful he was, and all these people were trying to console her, and the energy had shifted from she was the victim and he was the perpetrator, um, and then I started to imagine what ripples were going to go out from that Starbucks now. And I started to think about how people were going to interact with their people out in the world after that. But then what happened is I started to think about that man and realized something in me recognized myself in him. Now, I've never berated a barista for putting whipped cream on my caramel macchiato. I don't order caramel macchiatos, but, um, and I may not have, I, it may not be as blatant as the Starbucks example, but when we are, that man is so entrenched, I started to, now this is me projecting a little bit onto him about what his experience may be like, or what my experience living in a body um, and living in my reality as somebody who doesn't have enough time and is always rushing off to be late and doesn't notice that somebody's putting love in my cup because I'm so busy dashing from place to the next, or that work event that is so important. That man was probably late for work for something that felt very, very important, right? Maybe he had a big meeting, a big proposal that he was giving, and he was stressed out, and he was worried about it. Now, I'm not justifying his behavior. His behavior was atrocious. But I can understand that he didn't know who he was. He's not in a place where he can realize that our souls want to sing, that our inherent who we are is wild and free and the ocean and that we are meant to experience love and connection with one another. And I've certainly had times in my life where the details and the busyness of my life felt much more important than connecting with somebody and experiencing the love that other people had to offer. And I think about the ripples that I inadvertently sent out into the world when I was operating from that place. What was I sending out into the world? And it really all relates back because our society, we love to other people, right? She was the good barista. He was the evil businessman in a suit. She was love. He was hate. She was good. He was bad. And we do that everywhere. That's a, a, a big example, but how, I mean, Democrat, Republican, Israel, Palestine. I, I, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot I could give, you know, it, it's red shirt, blue shirt. Like, we, we are so, are, we are ingrained and entrenched. It is so in us to other people, the haves and the have-nots, the rich and the poor. Everything is what box do you fit in? And I'm going to argue today that that's all in the relative, because at the core, we are that soul craving connection. Everybody, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what the circumstance, everybody wants to be loved, they want to be seen, and they want to be heard. And it doesn't matter what any other circumstances are. And so the businessman needed a hug. Now, I wasn't going to be the one to give it to him. He didn't seem real receptive to the hug. But the fact remains... All we did was perpetuate in that Starbucks his belief that people are jerks, right? And that he doesn't have time and that people are awful. We sent him on his way. He learned absolutely nothing and he will 
most likely berate another bar barista down the line, right? Now, I'd like to believe, and we all know, that we're at choice and that anything can change in any moment. I'm very grateful that I am no longer somebody that doesn't have time for connection. I'm very grateful that there was this community and this teaching to sort of, you know, hijack my consciousness from living so entrenched in the relative and so entrenched in the problem and what's wrong that I could, didn't even know that I had the ability to live from a higher place. You know, this teaching taught me, like, if you plant jerk seeds, you're not going to get a love garden, right? You're going to get a bunch of jerk trees. That's how this works, right? And if we plant love seeds, then we get a love garden. So I'm not making, nobody is wrong in this situation, right? The, the people, everybody was doing the best they could and was well-intentioned in that scenario. But I can't help but wonder what would have happened if somebody had said, sir, you look like you are late and overwhelmed. Can I pay for your coffee? I don't know, but I do know that it's time that we stop pretending that what we're doing in the Starbucks of the world is not impacting these greater atrocities that we no longer want to see. We are energetically sending ripples out into the world with every action and every conversation and everything that we do. And so I, I, I want to send love ripples out into the world. And do I do it perfectly? No. I have a bracelet that says, remember who the F you are, because I forget sometimes, right? But when, I'm, when I was in that Starbucks, I was like, oh, I get it. What if every barista everywhere had this woman's ability to infuse love into a cup of coffee? And then all of, every person that went into a Starbucks got that love cup of coffee and then went out and said, after you, no, after you. Can I help you with your groceries? Those look really heavy. Oh, no, I pulled out this cart for you. This one, that one has a wobbly wheel. Don't take that one. Like if we took the time to actually connect, to actually love, to actually actually care. Those ripples have the ability to change the world. This generation has the ability to change the world. I watch, I, I'm blessed to, for, sometimes Dylan lets me go to his school um, and go to his track meets as long as I pretend like I don't know him and sit quietly in the corner and <laughs> behave myself. Uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, it was so amazing. I was watching. He was at a track meet um, last week. And I was watching the kids. They're on opposing teams. They're competing against each other. They're competing for the top dog spot. And I watched them be kind to one another, to be gracious. I watched as, you know, they'd get each other's shot puts and hand them to one another. I watched, you know... My son, who is an amazing example of this love and kindness that just is so inherent in him, I'm often in awe and inspired. I watched him high-fiving other people on other teams when they did well. It didn't take away from the fact that my son got number one and hit his PR, <laughs> right? Them doing well did not diminish his light. And it's about time that we start rooting for everyone and championing, and championing, that's a hard word, everyone, and sending those lovables out into the world. We differ on the boxes that we create, right? I, might, I live you know, in Westlake Village. I live in the suburbs. My experience of life is very different from somebody who lives in a congested city, right? I'm, I'm very blessed. Like, there's the... the people who have money and the people who don't have money box and there's the working in business and there's the people who you know are masseuses or healers or whatever like the relative boxes are different but who we are is fundamentally the same and that song in that video if everyone cared and nobody cried if everyone loved and nobody lied and if everyone shared and swallowed their pride then we'd see the day when nobody died. 
That's the call to action, to get this vision statement off the wall and out into the world and send those ripples. So I'm going to leave you. I found this quote, the medicine woman's prayer. I will not rescue you, for you are not powerless. I will not fix you, for you are not broken. I will not heal you, for I see in you wholeness. I will walk with you through the darkness as you remember your light. We are all beacons of light. And the more that we allow our own light to shine as bigly, bigly, (laughs) bigly, sure, bigly and brightly as we can, the more that we give others permission to do the same. So my intention for this week is to smile more, to look into people's eyes, I'll spend some time eye-gazing with Dr. Eric and people in the grocery store. That should be fun. Do you have, excuse me, sir, do you have a moment to eye-gaze? Um, and I'm going to infuse love in everything that I touch. I'm going to bless every piece of paper as I send it on its way. Because I trust and I know that that is the energy that changes the world. Who's with me? Yeah. Namaste. Thank you.